Hi guys, today I'm showing you my productive but also portable video editing setup. Everything you see here fits in my check bag and I can bring them with me wherever I travel. The setup includes a 24 inch 4K portable monitor, a 11 inch M4 iPad Pro, and the computer I'm using is the M4 Mac Mini. It's hiding underneath. All the media I'm using is in my Samsung T9 SSD. And over here, I have a pair of Logitech Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. And for the audio, I'm just using a, a pair of random earbuds over here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. The iPad is connected to my Mac Mini via the USB-C cable, and I'm using it as a second monitor. I'm using wired sidecar over here. So why am I using this setup? Why don't I just use a MacBook Pro or have a proper dual monitor desk setup? Well, recently I'm working on some projects. It's kind of slammed, but right in the middle of the project, I need to travel abroad to visit my family. I kind of want to have a comfortable setup that I can bring with me. So no matter where I am, I can still feel familiar and productive. That's why I come up with something like this. Of course, I can use my 16-inch MacBook Pro and even pair my iPad Pro as a second monitor. But I realized for a long edit session, a 16-inch screen from the MacBook still feels a little small. I would rather to have something like a 24-inch or even larger. But then I don't really want to pair this 24-inch monitor with a 16-inch MacBook Pro because as you can see, my desk is kind of small. If I have all the thing laying over here, it's very crowded. And also I know after I'm gone, the desk over there is also pretty small. So I probably need to try to minimize my desk usage. Okay, since we've already started talking about computers, let me introduce my Mac Mini first. This is the base model M4 Mac Mini, and I've been a huge fan of it. You may feel like I'm crazy. I give up on my high-spec 16-inch MacBook Pro and use this little machine to edit videos. But you know what? In the past month, working on all those projects on it, I feel like it's very capable for a lot of things. So before this month, I only used this Mac Mini to edit like some short videos I post on YouTube. The projects are not very complicated, so it definitely performs very well. But this time, I'm actually editing huge projects on the Mac Mini. And to my surprise, it also handles very well. So I often work on promo types videos. And other than video editing, sometimes I also need to do color correction. When I was in the office, we used M1 Ultra Mac Studio to do all those works. But now I'm doing everything on this M4 Mac Mini, and the whole process still feels pretty smooth. But there are definitely differences compared to a high-end machine. For example, because of the single media engine, when I'm doing transcoding or exporting, the M4 Mini takes quite longer. And when I'm doing tasks that require a lot of GPU powers, for example, some intense effects or doing some AI related work like AI upskilling, voice isolation, something like that, the M4 Mac Mini also struggles a bit. But if you have the time to wait a little bit, and also if you don't need to apply too many of those effects, the M4 Mac Mini still works pretty well. And it's just so small and so light. I can just throw it into my backpack. Then let me talk about the monitor. This is the U-Perfect U-Color T3. It's a 24-inch 4K IPS monitor. I've actually made a video about it. It's a portable monitor with a built-in kickstand. So it's very easy to set up on the desk. The whole thing is also not heavy. It's lighter than my 16-inch MacBook. You can connect the monitor to your Mac Mini via USB-C cable, but because it's a large monitor, it does require an additional power supply. So I use another USB-C port to connect to just a regular USB-C adapter. What I really like about this is that it has a 4K panel. Among all the large portable monitor, like from 22 to 24 inches, a 4K high-resolution panel is kind of rare. 
And I think for video editing or any types of creative work, a high resolution panel is really important because when you look at all the small text, small UI, a 1080 panel is just not very comfortable to look at. And a 4K panel is also really great to preview the 4K video you are editing. And the color of this monitor is also good enough, 100% sRGB and supports 1 billion colors. It has a 350 nits brightness and 60 hertz refresh rate. For creative work, I think 60 is enough. Then let me talk about my iPad Pro over here. So right now I turn on the dual monitor mode in DaVinci Resolve and I use the second screen to show my media beans. But sometimes I actually use the iPad Pro to show a video clean feed. Just like this. Just a random project to demonstrate. I'm using my iPad Pro to show a full screen preview. And actually the iPad Pro supports reference mode when you use it with a Mac. It can really use it OLED screen's potential to show you a very color accurate preview. So you can use it for color grading. Display and brightness, advanced, and turn on the reference mode over here. And now the iPad Pro will disable all the dynamic display adjustments like the true tone, auto brightness, something like that. The brightness will be at a fixed level. For SDR, it will be 100 nits. And for HDR, it will be 1000 nits. It will auto detect the video feed and adjust the color space and brightness over here. Then my keyboard and mouse, nothing special here. They are just the things I've been using for a long time. This is Logitech Pebble Keys 2. It's simple, but it's comfortable and pretty easy to carry. And the Logitech MX Master 3S is a great option for video editing. I've actually linked a lot of the ventures of shortcuts on all those buttons, and they have been really helpful. I really want to try the new MX Master 4, maybe at some point. I have my Samsung T9 SSD connect to my Mac Mini, and it has all the media on here. It's just simple and solid. And for audio, I just have a pair of, what is this? This is JLab. Yeah, it's less than 10 bucks. I don't need to mix my audio. So when I'm editing video, I just need to have something to listen. Here's that. Okay, that's pretty much my whole setup. When I need to travel later this week, I'll pack everything up. I will put the portable monitor in the sleeve bag and put my M4 Mac Mini into the original paper box and put those two things in my checked luggage. You can actually get a travel bag for the M4 Mac Mini as well. It's very affordable. But because I realize I don't really travel that often, so I haven't purchased one yet, but they look really nice. And all the other small things, I will just put them in my backpack and carry them onto the plane. They don't really take a lot of space. All right, hope you enjoyed this setup. If you are interested in any of the items I talk about today, you can find the links in the description. If you found this video useful, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Now check out some other videos of mine. I'm sure you'll be interested as well. Have a nice day.